Lord, this appeal is filed by me, the petitioner, against the Art of the Learned Single Judge. Last time it came up, uh, we had agreed that it may be kept on another date. It's now kept today. And yesterday, after I had ordered the aircraft, I was, I was told that they have filed an application to receive additional documents, and they have filed a reply affidavit to my stay petition. But, uh, I'm, I'm not complaining about that. I'm only pointing out as a fact that yesterday they have filed a reply affidavit to my stay petition in the writ appeal, and they filed an application to receive additional documents. Be that as it may. I'll tell you, Lordship, what the controversy is. And Do you wish to respond to the documents? And uh, I, I will. I, I wish to. And if your Lordships permit me, I will. But I have a proposal. I have a suggestion. I'll tell you, Lordship, please give me just five minutes for the clock. The controversy is about when a document was received in Madhya Pradesh for the purpose of stamping. Your Lordships know that a document executed outside the state of Madhya Pradesh is liable to stamping on the day it is, quote unquote, received in Madhya Pradesh by anyone received in Madhya Pradesh. Now, in the writ petition, I propounded a date, 5-8-2019. The Lordship may just kindly note these three dates. I propounded that I this document was received in Madhya Pradesh. Well, this received has been interpreted in New Century Jute Mills, date on which it is received. I propounded 5-8-2019 as a date on which I submitted it to the Stamp Authority. In the counter and in the impugned order, in the impugned order, the authority held that the date was 2-3-2017, 2-3-2017, the date on which the Allahabad NCLT passed an order and a scheme of amalgamation, which is the document sought to be registered. Now, this was the rival dates propounded by two sides. The state propounded 2-3-2017, the uh, company propounded 5 8 2019 Now, whether 2 3 2017 is the impugned order and the state finally supported that impugned order, or whether the date I propounded will make a difference because of the notification. I will come to all that later. The learned judge rejected both dates and then found that the date was 29-6-2017. My first ground is, in certiorari jurisdiction, you can set aside an order of the authority if you find it to be wrong, but you can't substitute your view. But that's very uh, well settled, my lord. I'll, uh, if necessary, I'll show authority. You can't find another date, you would have to remand it to the authority to take evidence and to hear both parties if you, both dates are rejected. Now, the add to the further complication, yesterday's affidavit, they are propounding a fourth date, 29-3-2017. In between the date they originally propounded, and, in between, uh, and the date found by the learned judge, 29-3-2017. Now, I can file a counter-affidavit, and we can argue it. But I think, my lot, I submit respectfully that the proper course is to remand it to the authority to decide which is the date. Because the section, the Lord, Lordship may kindly have the stamp pad. Just one section of the stamp pad. 3BB, Section 3, 
Okay. Clause B of the Indian okay. Stamp Act as amended in Madhya Pradesh. Yeah. Well, the book uh, contains the Madhya Pradesh amendments. Now, 3BB. It's not here. Does your Lordship have the uh, a later edition 2020 or so? Now, if this is the same book, it will be in page 12 or so. Section 3, BB. Proviso BB. Section 3, ABC. Then provided BB. I, I may not, uh, just to understand the section. Please see, Malak 3. Subject to the provisions of this Act, and to the exemptions contained in Schedule 1, the following instrument shall be chargeable with duty of the amount indicated in that schedule as a proper duty thereof, respectively, that is to say, A, yes. executed past. Huh? My Lord has the book? Yes, he ah, sir. Uh, executed by any person is executed in India on after. B, every bill of exchange. C, every instrument other than a bill of exchange, provided that, except as otherwise expressly provided in this Act, and notwithstanding anything contained in Clause A, Clause B, or Clause C of this section, or in Schedule 1, the amount indicated in Schedule 1A of this Act shall be the duty chargeable on the instruments mentioned in Clauses AA and BB of this proviso, as a proper duty thereof. So what applies is AA or BB. AA doesn't apply in the BB. Every instrument mentioned in Schedule 1A as chargeable with duty under that schedule, which not having been previously executed by any person, is executed out of Madhya Pradesh on or after the commencement of the Central Provinces and Bera Indian Stamp Act 1939 and relates to any property situated or to any matter or thing done or to be done in Madhya Pradesh and is received in Madhya Pradesh. So it is AA is executed in Madhya Pradesh, EB is executed out of Madhya Pradesh and received in Madhya Pradesh. And Millard, a new century uh, jute mill what case. Is the, what is the document we are talking about? This is the document. Millard, this was an amalgamation. Somebody was the owner of a series of a number of cement plants. My company, my client, bought those cement plants. These cement plants are in Madhya Pradesh, uh, Maharashtra, Uttar Pradesh, etc. I had to necessarily, my head office is in Bombay. His, his, the seller's head office is in Allahabad. Therefore, we had to go to two company courts, which is NCLT. So NCLT Bombay passed an order on a particular date, and I went to the stamp authority. That's not the issue. NCLT Allahabad passed an order on 2-3-2017. That is the first day. 2-3-2017. I brought the instrument I brought the instrument and presented to the stamp authority, according to me, of course they are disputing, 5-8-2019. So I am saying it is received in Madhya Pradesh on 5-8-2019. What was that instrument? Amalgamation, scheme of amalgamation. So, if, if the order is passed on 2-3-2017, yes. what could you draw? Amla, what did you, I, what did you have, present on 5-8-2019? I'll, I'll tell you, Lord. I had to go to various authorities to get the property mutated in my name, the mining means transferred in my name, the factory license transferred in my name. It's a scheme of amalgamation, which is the basis of all these acts. I was doing it in Maharashtra. I was doing it in Uttar Pradesh. Then I came to Madhya Pradesh on five, and then I applied to the Madhya Pradesh authority. He said, produce the original document. I produced it on 5-8-2009. What was that document? The scheme of amalgamation. 
Authority received it in Madhya Pradesh on 5-8-2019. The stamp authority, as look, uh, uh, if your lordship sees New Century Jute Mills, it's very clear. If a, a document is acted upon in Madhya Pradesh, if any authority receives it, that is a relevant date. We have, we've given a judgment. No, is it authority received it or party received it? No, authority. Received and interpreted. Yeah, new 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 century jute mills is the is the case law on the subject. It very clearly analyzes and says if a document is executed outside a state, it is the date on which it is received in Madhya Pradesh which matters. So oh, received by whom? Received by the authority, my lord. That's what we want to know. Is it by the authority or is it by one of the parties? No, no, the parties in Allahabad, my lord. Parties in Allahabad and Bombay. Party company has various branches. I am in Bombay. I applied in NCLT Bombay and NCLT Allahabad. And I got two orders. Like two company codes. I got two orders. Then I have to do various things under the scheme to get the licenses transferred, the mines transferred, the mining uh, permissions transferred, leases transferred. I'm doing all that. I'm doing all that. When I came to Madhya Pradesh, I informed the government that uh, the secretary asked me to, uh, the, the, the stamp authority asked me to produce the original document. I said there is no original as such, it's a certified copy of a court order. Then he, the learned judges found that in my favor, that a certified copy is the original. That I produced it before him in 5-8-2019 is not in dispute. What they are propounding is 5-8-2019 is not the first date. It is the date on which the Allahabad NCLT passed the order, which is, which is relevant. The learned judges rejected that. The learned judges found that on 29-6-2017, I had applied for a mining transfer permission. That is, the mines in the name of the seller have to be transferred to me. And although there were no documents before the learned judge, from the correspondence, the learned judge said, since you acted upon the scheme of amalgamation and you applied for a mining transfer, I will take 29-6-2017 as a relevant date, which I say, that is a dot, not the date on which the document is received. It was only a mining transfer for which I applied, the seller and the buyer. Now they are pr pr producing a set of documents which apparently purport to show that this scheme of amalgamation was filed before the mining officer on 29-3-2017. That's what they filed yesterday, to which I have to file a reply and examine those documents. And I may even ask for... Let you file your response. Ah, all I'm saying is, my primary argument is, in certiorari jurisdiction, your lordships do not substitute your view for the statutory authority and what is the relevant date. No, oh, Mr. Chidambaram, yes. if we agree with you and hold that the third date... Fourth has, date now. No, fourth now, but the third date because third. we are testing the order. Yes. Third date which has come in the order is not correct. Yes. We must still accept the date given by them or by you. So where's the question of remit? Remit is in case there is a confusion. No, this is one of the points. The yeah. Learned judges remitted it anyway for calculation. Learned judges remitted it. Calculation of deficiency. calculation of various things. Deficiency of various things. That's a different issue. Therefore, but I in, am, in century uh, jute mills, yeah. I be a in the century jute mills case, Yes. Where is the finding that receipt means received by the authorities yes. and not by the party? No, no. Please see the judgment. Please see the judgment. Give, give a copy, sir. There is a receipt in the state. Huh? It's a receipt in the state. Yes, sir.
we have uploaded the copy in the system. Do we have it? We have, we have, we have it. Right. Is 1964, that... 1SCR 530, yeah. 535. Now kindly see paragraph 16. It's a short judgment. Yes. But by a constitution bench. 16. Some complications arise in the cases where both the liabilities arise, that is, where the instrument is executed in one state, but is related to property situated in or to things done or to be done in another state and is received in the second state. In these cases, the liability to stamp duty arises first under the stamp law of the first state on account of execution of the state. A second liability arises under the law of the second state when the instrument is received in that second state. How is the liability to be discharged? Has it been discharged in accordance with the law in force in the state where execution takes place or in accordance with the law in force in the state where the second dutiable event, namely the receipt in the second state occurred? Obviously, an officer of the first state may reasonably think it is a law of his state which must prevail. And so even if the document is being stamped in accordance with the law of the other state, he may ignore that stamping as not done in accordance with the law in India and proceed to demand that it must bear stamps in accordance with the law of his state. It was to avoid the hardships that may conceivably result from such a situation that the legislatures of different states enacted Section 19, Capital A of the Stamp Act. This section of the Uttar Pradesh Act runs as thus. Well, this is equal to our 3BB. Yes. Where any instrument becomes chargeable in any part of the state other than Uttar Pradesh with duty under this Act or under any other law for the time being in force in any part of the state, and thereafter becomes chargeable with a higher rate of duty in Uttar Pradesh under Clause BB of the first proviso to Section 3, which I read to your worship. Then, then uh, one, notwithstanding anything contained in the first proviso, the amount of duty chargeable on such instrument shall be the amount chargeable on it under Schedule 1A, less the amount of duty on it, or if any, already paid in it in the states in addition to the stamps, etc., that, that your Lordship may know. Therefore, where the rate of duty in Uttar Pradesh, now substitute Madhya, Madhya Pradesh, for them, where the rate of duty in Madhya Pradesh for an instrument which becomes chargeable for stamp duty, as mentioned above, an instrument executed out of Madhya Pradesh and relating to property situated or to any matter or thing done or to be done in Madhya Pradesh, with a higher rate of duty in Madhya Pradesh. Well, Madhya Pradesh has a higher rate of duty. That's how this issue arises. If the Madhya Pradesh was the same or lesser duty, this issue won't arise. Um, uh, to be paid a um, higher rate of duty in Madhya Pradesh, then than in West Bengal, only the excess is to be paid in Madhya Pradesh. And it is only this excess which requires to be paid in Madhya Pradesh stamps. Section 19A, in terms, applies only to an instrument which, after becoming chargeable in any state outside Madhya Pradesh, becomes chargeable in Madhya Pradesh with a higher rate of duty. It seems to us, however, that where the rate of duty in Madhya Pradesh is the same or even lower, no further duty is payable on such an instrument, or it would be anomalous and unreasonable to hold that the legislature intended that though where a higher rate is payable in Madhya Pradesh, the excess need only be paid. The, Uttar, the Madhya Pradesh rate should be paid in full, where what was already being paid is the same or higher. The result of this will be that if an instrument, after becoming liable to duty in one state, on execution there becomes liable to duty also in another state, on receipt there, it must first be stamped in accordance with the law of the first state, and it will not require to be further stamped in accordance with the law of the second state when the rate of that second state is the same or lower. And where the rate of the second state is higher, 
it will be required to be stopped and only with the excess amount and that in accordance with the law and the rules in force in the second state. The mortgage deed, which is a subject matter of the present petition, was executed in Uttar Pradesh, though it related to property situated in West Bengal and was received in that state for registration. The first dutiable event was the execution, which took place in UP. The second dutiable event was the receipt in West Bengal. When it came before the officers of Uttar Pradesh. Oh, there's a full stop in between. Yes, full stop, brother. When yes, it came before is, the... I this, am relying on that. No, this is three stages. Execution, receipt, and present. And third is, when it came before the officers for registration. Well, uh, let, let me read that paragraph yes. again. Yes. The mortgage deed, which is a subject matter of the present petition, was executed in Uttar Pradesh, though it related to property situated in West Bengal and was received in that state for registration. The first dutiable event was the execution which took place in UP, semicolon. The second dutiable event was a receipt in West Bengal. Now, question when it here, came before, when it full no, stop. No, no. Yes. Question is received by whom? I, 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 I think yes. this uh, uh, answers it. When it came before the officers of Uttar Pradesh for decision, whether it was duly stamped or not, the officers of Uttar Pradesh were bound to hold, for the reasons we have discussed earlier, that the instrument was not duly stamped as it did not bear Uttar Pradesh stamps. The fact that the instrument has been stamped in accordance with the law of West Bengal, could not justify a conclusion it had been stamped in accordance with the law in force in India. The officers of the state of UP therefore rightly held that the original mortgage deed was not. It is a receipt by the officer in Uttar Pradesh. Well, this is a reverse case. No, this is, this is the reverse case. I'll Mr. explain. Chidambra, yes. Here the document is executed in Uttar Pradesh. But, but stamped, first of all. But not stamped. Not stamped. In your case, document is executed in way. Uttar Pradesh it's and stamped. Way. Yes. No, no. So Uttar Pradesh is pending, was pending at that time. Was so, pending. question was whether receipt in West Bengal and stamped in West Bengal satisfies the requirement of being stamped in the state of execution. It does not. It does not. It if does the, not. Uttar Pradesh is higher, it does not. If Uttar Pradesh is lower, it will. But here, Although the document was executed in Uttar Pradesh and it related to property in West Bengal, for reasons known to that person, he got it stamped in West Bengal. He is entitled to. He is not required to stamp it uh, in one state. It has to be. He has to pay higher of the duties. If he's no. paid it in the state which is higher, then nothing the has to be paid. The other duty, the other state will give a. Well, look, he is entitled to, and in fact, according to me, he is entitled to choose the state. But pay the, the, pay the higher of the amount. No, no, pay the lower of the amount first. And then the deficit in then the other. The deficit so in ultimately, the highest. duty is one, which is the higher of the two. Correct, absolutely. Either he that pays section it, says, either he pays section it in two parts to a lower state and the deficit there. One state will get it or two states will get it. Yeah. That's all. And in terms of... Uh, my outgo, my liability is the same. Will I pay it in one state to one the higher state, higher rate, the duty state, or will I split it between the lower duty state and the difference alone in the higher duty state? But question is, what uh, is the meaning uh, of the expression received? I, I'm answering. Yes. Here, what happened is, it was executed in Uttar Pradesh, property related to West Bengal. West Bengal was lower duty, obviously. So he took and he went to West Bengal and paid that duty. Then he came to Uttar Pradesh. Now, receipt on Uttar Pradesh, this third line. When it came before the officers of Uttar Pradesh. That don't connect it with the first sentence, connect it. Just see the full sentence. Yes, when it came before the officers of Uttar Pradesh 
for decision whether it was duly stamped or not, the officers of Uttar Pradesh were bound to hold that the instrument was not duly stamped as it did not bear Uttar Pradesh stamps. I had the document always, Miller. The person concerned had the document always. He took it to West Bengal first, then he brought it to Uttar Pradesh. When the day the received in Uttar Pradesh is when the officer receives it from Uttar Pradesh. That's not, that's not what this is. Uh, it is always with me. No, no. This is the document is executed in Uttar Pradesh. You remain in Uttar Pradesh. Yes. Don't come to Madhya Pradesh. The day you land in Madhya Pradesh with the document. Yeah, but in the example here in the no, Supreme Court, if he, if the document at, was always with him, whether he went, when he went to Calcutta, so this, when he... This must strictly not apply because the document was originally in Uttar Pradesh when executed. Yes. So received, it has to be the first state when it was executed in this case because it was executed in Uttar Pradesh. No, but it was not, not, not received by an officer. Can't be. I executed the order. No, I but, executed the order. But Mr. Chidambaram, what it further holds is the officer was bound to reject it. Because it was, the West Bengal duty was lower. No. Because yeah, say so, Miller. Say so. Intumens was not duly stamped as it did not bear Uttar Pradesh stamps. The Uttar Pradesh can only be the deficit stamp duty. It had to be, Mr. Chidamra, this judgment may not strictly apply. No, no. It's for only the for the proposition to... received. Only for the proposition received in the state. Even then, you see, you are re reading the word expression received in conjunction with the following sentence, the officer. No, no, no. It is always with me. So, if it was always with me, this century case, the document was executed in Uttar Pradesh, then taken out and brought back. Well, produced in West Bengal and brought and, yeah. and, uh, and then, then brought back and presented to the officer. Ah, that is the date which is relevant. No, but the, in the provision proviso, this proviso that you are reading deals yes. with the case where a document is executed outside. Correct. And for the first time is brought in the Correct. state. That is our case. Yes. That is our case. So this my is... submission is to my my, my Lord Chief, uh, on, on, my Lord the Chief Justice's question. The document is in my hands always once the learned judge of nclt Allahabad signed the document and i got a certified copy the document is always with me i produce it in Allahabad authority on some day uttar pradesh authority that is pending that was pending on that day. i produce it in madhya pradesh authority on one day the received in Madhya Pradesh cannot be in my hands in Madhya Pradesh. It has to be received in Madhya Pradesh. Received in Madhya Pradesh can only be by an authority in Madhya Pradesh. But then, then it gives you an unlimited time. It, it does never, not. Never presented to the authorities. Your time will not. No, if I have ready. nothing to do, if I have no compulsion to do anything in Madhya Pradesh, I don't have to present it. But it is a document. You see, every document which is executed, if it is required to be stamped, has to be stamped within a particular. Well, only, only if it is, only if it is, uh, only if it relates to property or to any matter or thing done or to be done in Madhya Pradesh. So, if it relates to property in Madhya Pradesh, I have to. If the property has to be muted in my mutated in my name, I have to present it to any matter or thing done. Or to be done in Madhya Pradesh. I can wait, my lord, when I have to do it. Uh, there's no compulsion that uh, the document has to be executed, uh, uh, to, to, to be produced the next day. I can do it when it's necessary for me to do it. Business exigencies, my lord. When it's necessary for me, three DB, very clear, and relates to any property situated or to any matter or thing done to be done in Madhya Pradesh and is received in Madhya Pradesh. Bula, this received in Madhya Pradesh cannot be received in the hands of the person because it's always in the hands of the person. Received in Madhya Pradesh is some authority receives it in Madhya Pradesh. Any authority. I'm not saying necessarily stamp authority. So that would be a very narrow interpretation. If I produce it before any authority in Madhya Pradesh, who is a statutorily like, exercising something which I have to be done or to be done, that is a document. 
If he is not the stamp authority, what he will do, Mela? He will impound the document and refer it to the stamp authority. If he is the stamp authority, he will stamp it. Therefore, received can only be received in Madhya Pradesh, received, received by a governmental authority in Madhya Pradesh. Mela, I can give it to my uh, manager. That is not received in Madhya Pradesh. It is received in Madhya Pradesh only for the purpose of stamp duty. Even in that, Mela. Even in pounding sense, so. Even impounding sec section 33 of the stamp pack, yes. which is what I just now said. Kindly yes. see 33. Then 33 becomes so OTO. No, no. Because there can never there can never be an impounding. No, no. 33 becomes relevant. Please read uh, 33. Every person having by law or consent of parties authority to receive evidence. And every person in charge of a public office before whom any instrument chargeable in his opinion with duty is produced or comes in the performance of his functions shall, if it appears to him that such instrument is not duly stand, impound the same. Once he impounds it, he refers this to the collector. Now, look, this is the, this is the, this is the, according to me, uh, consistent with the day-to-day uh, -day -day practice. I take it to various authorities if it's a nationwide operation. I don't have to take it to all the authorities on the same day. Then I have to get done something done or to be done, I take it to an authority. If it is not stamped and if he thinks it's stamped, he will impound it under 33 and refer it. Now in this case, they have now yesterday, according to them, got documents which which was not before the learned single judge uh, not before the court not before the uh, order authority they have come across documents which according to them points out that the document was produced before an authority on on 29-3-2017, that is the fourth date they are propounding. Two dates we propounded, learned judge found a date, third date. They may be right, they may be wrong. I'm not uh, willing to state anything unless I take instructions to my client. The fourth date they are propounding. Now, which of the dates I submit, Mala, with great respect, uh, I think I'm uh, a good, good uh, legal authority to support that. In certiorari jurisdiction, your lord, lordship will not fix the date. You send it back to the authority, point out the uh, controversy, and say you decide according to law and the evidence. Anyway, the matter is remanded. No, Mr. Dumbro, let's test the counter filed by them. Yeah. They're saying you presented it before an authority on. That's what they said. Now, assuming you also accept. That yes, I have that not was, taken instruction. That's why I said, assuming you also, yeah. your yes. uh, instructing counsel takes instruction and instructs, yes, that was the day we presented it first. Yes. Then where's the question of uh, sending it to an authority to assess what was the date if you accepted? If you accept it as the trigger date, then the, the calculation will take place, even in these uh, two to six proceedings. Question is. Did I present those documents to an officer? So take instruction on that. If you have, then the, at least that Did part I of the document. Would... That document to an officer. Because what they have filed is uh, they what they they may have another document, I don't know. What they have filed is the two-page order by the judge. But the scheme has not been filed in the compilation. Now, what, what is the implication of that? I will take instructions and your lordship will finally find. The scheme of amalgamation runs to 400 odd pages. The instrument is the scheme of amalgamation. They have filed a two-page order of the NCLT Allahabad. They have not filed the 400 odd pages of scheme of amalgamation. Whether it was there in the file or not, I don't know. I may request the learned advocate general give me inspection of the file uh, subject to your lordship's orders. Now, if you see page nine of their uh, list of documents, yes, they are serial, serial number. Two. Now, now the new document, Miller. Yes, ah, the new document. 
yes. nine the serial yes. number two. Yes. Yes. It says list of uh, certified copy of NCLT Allahabad order and scheme of arrangement. That's what it says. That's right. But so what they have filed is a possible. Here what they have filed is thing. only two pages. Here they brought an extension. Why not be placed in the record? There is no, why not so as to avoid bulk? I don't know. That That's all right. I'm, yeah, not, I'm not trying to explain it. Mr. Jalantar, yes. we're not binding you down today. Yes. Please take instruction because this seems to suggest that probably it was submitted. You find out if that's the date, we'll freeze the date and direct them to assess in terms of the learn That is not the only issue. That is not the only issue. I'm only pleading that issue in the light of their affidavit. And since the matter has already been remanded to the authority, that this issue also should be remanded to the authority. But if your lordships feel that that question can be decided, I, I'm not coming in the way. All I'm saying is it would be appropriate to remand it to the authority, along with the other issues referred to by the learned Singh judge. This issue of what is the date on which the document was received in Madhya Pradesh should also be remanded. That is what I'm saying. But if your lordship thinks otherwise, I will come back. I file a reply and uh, inspect the file and then make my submission. Not, what, your... what I respectfully submit, not, we have moved an application raising objection with regard to maintain, maintainability of this data field. But if my learned friend has not addressed on that application, no reply is filed to that. Which and now, my not, your lordship. Why is it raised the, objection with regard to the of this rate of appeal? Uh, the copy I when time was applied to the other why side. Why is the rate of appeal not maintainable? Manu, Manu, we, we have come out with a case that Manu, the collector staff has adjudicated the issue. No, this is an order. What is being tested here is an order passed in a writ petition under 2 Under Article 227, this is what our humble submission is. That, two, two, six, so, Manu, we raised that objection, but you well, the learned judge, judge by a separate what, order, what, what, what I am judge by a separate no, order, right. held what you know, under 226 and the objection was not maintainable. Okay, but you need to address on I, that I issue. Know. Your lordship may kindly appreciate whether there is an objection Mr. on behalf of the state. If the learned senior judge has held a writ petition under 226 to be maintainable yes. and you are not aggrieved by that order, you are not assailing that. They have not appealed this. They have not appealed that order. Man. Tumala, not in the order which is impugned in this rate appeal. Even earlier, earlier order. If, ah, early, that's fine. You've not impugned it, so why should we now reopen that issue? Yeah. Your Lordship may kindly appreciate what has happened, my lord. Against the order of collector, there was a first appeal maintainable before divisional commissioner, and second appeal is provided before board of revenue. So at the initial stage, my lord, when what this rate petition came up for consideration before London single judge, we raised this objection, my lord, that it is yeah. the order which is assailed in the writ petition is uh, appealable. So well, that objection was turned down and honorable uh, single judge was tied in up to proceed further uh, with the writ petition value dealing on the merits of the order. The rejection of that order is not challenged by you. No, that we have not challenged by you. I have the order. So that's all right. No, it's okay. So now, now your lordship may kindly appreciate. You are 25th November 2020. Both objections were raised. With Both the, objections were raised. Mr. Dhamra, he is conceding that that is not being taken up. Very, very, very well. So, Mr. Singh, the only issue is in case they admit that the date which you say is in your return as the date when it was first presented along with the scheme of Ayurveda the Mesa, then at least that aspect will be closed. The rest will learn. So, when should we have it? Miller, the, uh, and Milot, since 2020, Milot, they have not paid anything. We'll so, finish it just now, Mr. Singh. We think it will be over. It's not. Uh, well, I will request the learned advocate general to give me inspection of the file. I'll find out. Probably your your clients would confirm. The, I'm sorry, his clients will confirm it is there. No, no, I want to see what was because this is filed by the transferor, yeah. not me. Transferor is Jay Prakash. Therefore, he would kindly see the list of documents from transferor. If it was me, my lord, I would not answer. List of documents from the transferee is only certified copy of the order of the National Company. Yes, but it's jointly signed by the state. By the state. I'm not disputing. I'm only want to inspect the file to see what the transfer are filed. I can't. I can't be refused inspection of a file, my lord.
I'm only asking for an inspection of the file. And it was not before the impugned uh, order authority, the stamp authority. It was uh, before another officer, mining officer, they said. So then received in state, received. No, no, I'm not, uh, I'm not quarreling on that. I only want inspection of the document today or tomorrow. Inspection of the document, time to file a counter and any other document and your lordship may fix a date. And in fact, uh, this document, yes. page 9, Yes. He is an extra to a joint application submitted by both the transfer and joint. No, yes, application is joint. Application is joint. Okay. Yes, so the an extra to that joint application. Obviously, you will not submit 400 doctor's document no, again. I am not I am not saying one way or other. I am only asking for... Hello, they are required file, to file, file reply is, to it. Manu, file file come out in the the file file file. I should also have the benefit of seeing the file. That's all. <laughs> Millenians, Ashurar, your call for your lordship calls for the records, and the petitioner is entitled to inspect the file. Your lordship may kindly appreciate, Malad, in the return before the learned single judge, we took a specific stand. Now, Malad, that the four mining lease they got executed at the instance of the petitioner, and that was the date when Malad, the instrument was first presented in the state of Madhya Pradesh. Now, Malad, there is no rebuttal to that government. Now, Malad, before the Honorable uh, Division Bench, Malad, we have simply filed those documents so that the Honorable Court may have an opportunity to peruse those instruments, Malad, those documents. So we presented it, Malad, and so as to avoid bulk of this IA, we have filed only, Malad, the uh, few, the, the extract of the, uh, the uh, these deeds, Malad, that we have filed. So my respectful submission is, Malad, if they want to, File reply to this IE Malad, they may file it. But before they learn it, single judge Malad, their case was that they filed some representation. Now, Sister Chidambaram, yes. An analogy can be drawn from section 18 of the stand 18 Malad? 18. Yes. Yes. Here also the expression first received in this is for documents which are executed outside the country. Out of India. Yes. And it is first received in India. Yes. So the receipt here is taken when it crosses the custom boundaries and enters India, no, no. not when it is presented for the first time before the collector. No, no. To the best of my knowledge, no authority, no court has held. No, no, that, Mr. Zidam, Execution is by me. No, your instructing counsel will instruct you because when you present a document to a stamp for stamping, if it is yes. executed outside, first thing they ask for you is the postal envelope through which it has been received in India to determine the three month period. That's how Hello. the authorities have been interpreting. I have not accepted the law slow under 18 because that does not arise in this case. No, it does not. But the expression received used in section 18. Yes. And section 3. I, I look at the case law. I look at the case law. Now, my Lord, my learned, learned advocate general. We will ask has, that you. Has filed an affidavit. Now, yes. please see paragraph 6 of the affidavit. Paragraph 6 of the affidavit. The present affidavit. Yes. The aforesaid documents. Oh, I is just a moment. Affidavit in support of IA. Yes. Which affidavit? affidavit from IA. Achha, achha. 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 The aforesaid documents already form part of the pleadings of the return. Paragraph 6 of the affidavit in support of the uh, additional documents. Yes. The aforesaid documents which he seeks to place already form part of the pleadings of the return filed by the answering respondents in the instant writ petition. This is the explanation to get over Order 41, Rule 27. Be that as it may, we see 57, paragraph 57 of the Bernard Single Judge's Judgment. We see paragraph 57 of the Bernard Single Judge's Judgment. Page 83. They say we had pleaded it, but we didn't place the documents. We are now placing the documents. Now, please see page 83, paragraph 57. Finding with 62. Finding with 60, uh, para 62. I'll read both paragraphs. The counsel to the petitioner submitted that, in fact, the date of receipt of instrument 
was 5-8-2019. That is my case. Although in the reply to the show cross notice, as well as the writ petition, petitioner claimed the relevant date was 24-10. Although a very weak attempt was made by Council of the State, so the relevant date would be 29-6-2-17, but thereafter the State Council changed its stand and submitted that only the date of execution of the document is relevant and not the date on which the instrument was received in the state of Madhya Pradesh. Now kindly come to para 62. For the reasons best known to the state, the aforementioned documents have not been placed on record. However, an equally vague reply was given by the petitioners in their rejoinder. However, as already pointed out by so-and-so, uh, four documents were mining lease transfer deeds and afforded deeds were got registered did not want that any mining lease should remain in the name of Jay Prakash, although it has not been clarified by any of the party. Whether a copy of the order passed by NCLT Allahabad was submitted at the time of registration of four documents or not, but one thing is clear, there is a clear reference to the order of NCLT Allahabad. Not only there was reference of order of NCLT Allahabad in registered deeds, but the execution of four mining lease transfer deeds clearly show that the petitioner had acted upon the order of the NCLT Allahabad. Once the petitioner had put the instrument, order of NCLT Allahabad into operation and also got the mining lease transferred in its name, then it is held that even if the copy of the order of NCLT Allahabad might not have been filed, but still the reference of the said order and further action on the basis of the said order would certainly mean that the instrument was received. This is the learned judges uh, interpretation, which I respectfully submit as wrong. Received has been construed by the learned judges reference. Well, your lordship will test that. But my learned friend's statement in the epidemic that this is documents for what was pleaded in the return is wrong because there was no pleading, there was no document filed no, no, before no, the last signature. Now it's filing the document. Para 61, Malut, that my learned friend has skipped reading of this. No, no, I, I agree. Para 61. 61 or 51? No, 61. 61. 61. 61. I'll read 61. The respondent and para 39 of its return has taken a very vague stamp. The stamp duty calculated based on the express provisions of Indian Stamp Pact and decisions of the Honorable Supreme Court, time and again date about the calculation for stamp duty. The petitioner has himself registered four documents, that's a mining transfer deeds on 29 6, 2017. Following documents were registered much before they wrote to the principal secretary. MP dated, this is the mining transfer deed of 29 6, 29 6, 29 6, and 29 6. In all the above deed, the petitioner clearly declares that the transferee hereby declares. That as per the scheme of arrangement approved by National Company Law Tribunal, wide orders dated February 15, Mumbai, and March 2 of Mumbai and Allahabad, respectively, it was accepted that all the conditions and liabilities which the transferor was having in respect of such mining lease. Clearly, the petitioner has been using the NCLT order for execute. Nobody, nobody disputes, Smala. Question is, when was the instrument received in Madhya Pradesh? And they are documents, they are, they are now filing the documents. I am not objecting to the documents. All I am saying is, your lordship will have to order that those documents be taken in record. And I will file a counter. And I only want to inspect the file, whether what was filed before the officer, whether it is only the order or whether the NCLT scheme has been filed. I just want to inspect it before I file the counter. So and your lordship may fix a date. I'm not asking for a, a long date. Your lordship may fix a date. The inspection, if you give it to today or tomorrow, then I'll only require a few days thereafter. So you take instructions mm -hmm. uh, as to whether you file it or not. You'll have a office. No, as I we will the, ask them to produce it on the uh, next day. Point it out. Transfer our file. It's a joint application. Application is joint. But the document is not said, documents filed by the transferor and transferee, which I have no legs to stand. Documents filed by the transferor, documents filed by the transferee. Therefore, I just want to satisfy myself before I satisfy your lordship that the NCLT scheme Allahabad was actually filed.
We'll ask them to produce it on the no, next. Please, day. please we'll ask them to produce it. And find out please ask them to produce it. And when, when he gives it, to, gives it to me, shows me that, that document in the file, and it will save you a lot of trouble. And I'll file you, the reply. What response will you file if the document is there, submitted by you? That's the end of it. Then there's no question of value. Or we'll ask them to simply produce that. No, no. Your Lordship may ask them to produce the file. I have no objection. That we will. If your Lordship wants to show it to me before the hearing, well and good. If your Lordship wants to satisfy yourselves, that is also Mr. acceptable Mr. for me. Mr. We're only wanting, since we've spent so much time, we're only wanting to give a short return.